We're going to talk about track planning as I design the track plan for the expansion of my layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Those of you who follow this channel regularly know that I am very excited right now about building an expansion to my existing layout. The first deck of that expansion is going to include some incredible operations and a number of industries, and I'm really, really excited about getting those things in place. Well, today I'm going to bring you along with me as we use AnyRail 6 to design that portion of my layout, and I'm going to show you exactly how that design is going to work and how it's going to expand some of the frustrating parts of the operation uh, issues on my present layout and help to make those so much better. Now, I'm going to be designing it with AnyRail 6, but this is not really an AnyRail 6 tutorial. I recently did a tutorial on the basic functions of AnyRail 6, and if you're looking for that kind of information, you can check out that video in the iCard in the corner of your screen right now. What we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you some existing parts of my layout that are going to be changing as they're going to shift around into the, the new part of the layout. And I'm going to show you how all of that track plan is going to work and how those operations are going to be improved by that part of my layout. So all that being said, let's head on over to the computer and I'll show you exactly what we're changing and how this is going to look. Check out our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. With some of the best prices and customer service in the business, they're your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. I wanted to begin by giving you uh, a glimpse at the lower deck of my layout uh, as a whole as it stands right now. And that's what you're looking at here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is my layout presently. And what you see in the light green is actually the uh, the plane of the bench work on the lower deck, and then of course the helix. And the area where we're going to be working uh, is in this area right here, uh, as the uh, uh, expansion is going to be in this direction uh, right here. Here you see, of course, the the, the helix, uh, and this area right here is my representation of of Saginaw, Texas. Uh, off of the end, uh, the, the north end of North Yard. And this is one area of my layout that I've never been happy with, uh, with this particular layout, because there is so much in Saginaw that I want to model. Uh, and here uh, I only have, as you see, uh, about four feet in which to, to model uh, Saginaw. And so it's been very truncated and I've just not been happy with it. I, I'm very excited to be able to, to come around this uh, new curve uh, and have much more space to, to model these things. And, and that's what I want to talk about today uh, is specifically kind of going to, to change these industries uh, and expand them on the, uh, on the new uh, part of the layout. Now, what we have here uh, that I want to show you, first of all, right over here in the very corner, uh, actually off of North Yard on my layout, is Universal Forest Products. Uh, and they receive lumber and hardware, and then they distribute it uh, through the region. This is not where Universal Forest Products should be. It actually should be over here in the Saginaw area. Uh, but uh, because uh, of, of, of space constraints, uh, this was the, the, the place that I had to put it. So I'm going to be moving Universal Forest products over into this area, and I'm going to be changing these tracks uh, to, to serve a, a, a grocery distributor, as uh, off of North Yard there are several of those. And so it'll give me an opportunity to, uh, to expand that uh, particular area. So Universal Forest is going to move over here where Saginaw uh, currently is. And then these three industries I'm going to tell you about, they're going to be moving around the curve. Uh, right here, this pair of tracks is uh, a Coke Materials, which handles primarily asphalt and, and paving type of materials. They, they receive asphalt in by tank car. Uh, these two tracks right here are quality carriers, which is a transloading facility for both the wet and dry foodstuffs. So things like uh, corn syrup, uh, flour, sugar, transloaded from uh, either tank cars or covered hoppers uh, to, to road trucks 
uh, and then distributed to, to, to industries. And then this corner over here is a very, very truncated uh, representation of uh, Trinity Industries Railcar Division. And at the time that I model, they actually built covered air slide covered hoppers. Uh, and I, I just had very, very little room to put them, and so I'm excited to be able to be able to expand them. And then, of course, the helix is going to move down as well. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm not, I'm not going to show you every step of this along the way, but I'm going to kind of talk you through the process uh, that I have used for figuring out how I want to arrange these tracks and uh, kind of show you what they're going to look like here in the in the software. Uh, the first thing I need to do is uh, I'm going to be building a, kind of a false wall here and the, the new bench work for, for both decks is going to hang off of this side of that wall. Uh, and so I need to, to draw a representation of that wall in here. The inside of this wall that I'm going to be building uh, will be exactly nine feet from from this wall here. So I'm going to use my my line feature, and I'm just going to uh, to to stick uh, a couple of lines in here that represent both sides of this new wall. And there you can see that I've I've drawn in my my wall, the a line representing both sides of the wall. I've made it a little bit bolder just so it kind of shows up, and I uh, colored it orange uh, so that uh, I know. Uh, you know that that is a wall and you're going to notice that I extended that uh, you can't see it all on the screen but we will scroll down here uh, I've extended it uh, 11 feet and 9 inches which is exactly how long this this wall is going to be and and that that length is determined by a, a, a post a support post that is not drawn uh, in the plan here but that sits at exactly uh, that distance right here at the end of that wall and this wall will will tie into a, a box that's around that that support post so the next step that I want to take is I want to define my bench work and I, I'm going to do that using a plane uh, just like I did here and uh, I'm going to, going to tie it into this bench work and show exactly where that bench work is going to, to hang on uh, this particular wall uh, which is going to extend from the wall out 18 inches and then it will curve uh, into this bench work and on this end it will it will curve around back into the wall. There we go, I have my, my bench work. Uh, it's time for me to start making the adjustments to my track plan. Now, as I come uh, out of North Yard, uh, all of this is going to, to remain uh, exactly as it is. In fact, I have a highway overpass that's modeled right here. I don't want to touch that at all. Uh, and I'm going to keep this switch, but I want to disconnect from this switch and I want to get rid of all of the track from here on to the right. Uh, so I'm going to come in here and uh, right click and disconnect both legs of, uh, of this particular switch and that allows me to, uh, um, to, to, to do what I want with all of this track. Can I delete it all at once? Well, I can delete a bunch of it at once. There we go. I was able to highlight that there. Now I'm ready to start uh, doing a little designing and laying some track in here. Uh, so the first thing that I, I want to do is this area right here where all of those industries were. Uh, now there's going to be just one industry. Uh, but this turnout is actually going to be the beginning of a, a, a siding that will serve as the access to all of the industries uh, along Saginaw. Uh, that will run kind of parallel to the main line. So I'm going to start here in this corner by uh, by laying a, uh, a a couple of curves. So I'm going to lay this curve here in this corner, and I'm going to kind of just eyeball it for now and line it up with this track. Uh, and I know that I want my main line along this wall to run about five inches off the wall because there's going to be another track and a, uh, a, a grain elevator back back behind that. So uh, I'm going to figure out exactly five, uh, approximately five inches here. And we're just going to drop that in place. And then for my siding, I'm going to add a parallel track to that. 
there we have that and that that yellow track indicates that this curve is a little tighter than my mainline minimum radius which is 18 inches but the fact that it's yellow and not red means that it's not tighter than my uh, full minimum radius which is uh, uh, which is 14 inches I'm just going to come in here with some flex track and uh, just going to to join these up and there we go uh, and then I'm going to, uh, I can use this piece that I cut here, drop it in, and we'll cut another piece. Now the one thing I didn't do was uh, include a, a switch here for for this industry which will be universal forest products so we're going to uh, drop a switch in here that needs to be a left hand switch and i'm going to use a medium radius stretch the flex track on our plan and we're going to just connect that there connect that there and then i've got this piece of straight we're going to drop in here and that gives us a pretty good sense of how Universal Forest is going to work. Now we'll start working on our tracks as they go through Saginaw itself. Um, and, and I'm going to begin by uh, putting this piece of flex track right here on the main. Only, I'm not going to leave all of this here. I'm going to actually cut this. I, I, I'm going to have a, uh, a left-hand turnout to, over into the siding that's going to go into my grain elevator. Uh, but I want, uh, since that's going to be a left-hand turnout and this is a right curve, I, I want some straight track in between there. So I'm going to just come down a, a few inches here and uh, cut this. Yeah, I think I'll still use a medium radius a left-hand turnout uh, that we're going to drop in right here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put in some flex to uh, extend my mane a little bit. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna add the, the siding here, and then we're gonna come back in and, and connect the crossover part here. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna have a large grain elevator right along the backdrop. Uh, but to help uh, with the switching part of the elevator, uh, this is gonna be like a crossover, and and this uh, uh, siding for the main is gonna have a, a tail track that's gonna go all the way back here, almost to the backdrop. Uh, so we'll we'll want to make sure that 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 crossing uh, works right so it'll be easier if we just put a piece of flex track in here uh, parallel to this one so we're going to add a piece of parallel flex track we're going to add it to the right side in this case and uh, I think actually an inch and a quarter is the distance that I want and there we go and then I can go ahead and drop a couple more pieces of flex in here and extend that up that way and then I'll bring my turnout in, bring this piece of flex over here, and I connect it there. Then we'll zoom back in and I need those two to, to line up. Okay, and there I have my uh, have my crossover connected. Um, zoom back out here a little more again, and I can bring this piece of flex down, tie it in here. Uh, now, in this case, I've got a, 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 a left a right hand curve, and then I'm coming into a right hand turnout. So I'm not going to worry about putting a spacer in here because because it'll be a continuing curve, not creating an S curve. Uh, so I'm just going to get my uh, right hand turn out um, right here and I'm gonna connect it to this okay now with that turnout in place uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a, a piece of flex track uh, connect it to uh, to the, the the through route of that uh, turnout and it, it's running there you know parallel to the main line I'm actually going to uh, maybe running just a little close I'm going to pull it out just a little bit there 
And uh, the, the way these industries work is uh, there is a, there, there's a kind of a lead uh, off of this siding uh, that then serves both Coke industries and quality carriers. And one thing I've decided to do is, is to kind of rearrange these two uh, industries. Uh, on the prototype, Coke industries comes first and then quality carriers. Uh, but in my case, I've just found that I, I've kind of figured out that um, I can get better placement of the tanks and the equipment that I need for those industries in the space that I have if I put uh, quality carriers first and then and then Coke Industries. Uh, uh, now both of these have two tracks uh, that, that serve them. I, uh, I realized that I had, I had said one thing and then another so I kind of went back and fixed that. I had said that both of these uh, industries uh, would come off of one lead uh, that was separate from uh, this siding uh, that uh, serviced all these industries, and I realized I had actually connected them both to that siding. So I came in and put in this other lead. So so off of this turnout, we go both to to, uh, to quality carriers here and down here to Coke Industries, and again we have some tanks uh, along here. Uh, now we're ready for for one more uh, turnout for uh, industries uh, here and uh, right hand turnout here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and extend my flex track on the through route and I'll put a piece of um, uh, I'll put a, uh, this left hand turnout that I brought in it's a good place for it because this is going to need two tracks as well and what we're going to have here is a company called uh, Fort Worth Pipe Company and um, they receive they were this this is not a comp, uh, this is not an industry that was on my layout before uh, it's one that I had wanted to put on but uh, hadn't had space for uh, and they will receive uh, coiled steel cars uh, and then they will uh, tur they turn that coiled steel uh, into uh, a large corrugated pipe like you would use for uh, for for whistles or, or or culverts that sort of thing um, and so there, there are two tracks here and they're separated a little bit because this track here is actually going to go inside the structure that's the one that brings in coiled steel the other track goes past the the, the structure uh, and there's a little yard past that where they load uh, pipe onto to flat car and then we'll curve this in here but leave a little extra space because again that wants to go inside of the the uh, the building before I, uh, I do the rest of those industry tracks, I want to make sure that I get my mainline curve set here because I, I need it to be in a certain place. I need it to fit within this length. And th what this is going to be is this is going to be an 18 inch curve. It's going to curve through the backdrop back into this area here, which is where my new helix is going to be. I just want to get it set in about the place that I want it to be. Um, want it to be just again just just inside of this so as long as it's above uh, this grid line right here we're fine um, and that's the, the main line is actually over here so I need it to be right about there and the reason why I need to have that in place is because I got some turnouts that have to go in here and I want to make sure that I got plenty of room for them to go in uh, this siding that has been serving all of these industries, uh, I need it to, to have the ability to run around uh, some cars. Uh, and I, I, I'm just going to put a crossover here because uh, this siding is going to keep on going down to, to another industry down here. Uh, and in fact, just to represent that, I'm just going to stick a piece of flex track down here. I'm not even going to connect it yet. But before I do that, I need to get this crossover in here. And yeah, I think that's going to work okay. So I'm going to come in here and just cut these pieces of flex. I want to grab the control point and drag it down to connect to those. Like that. And like that. And as I zoom back out a little bit, I've got my crossover in place. And again, I need a couple of tracks for Trinity. So uh, I'm going to cut in right here and add another uh, right hand turn out uh, one of the shorter ones um, here and that'll allow me to add a couple of tracks in here that one there is just about the right height to go to the edge or length to go to the edge of the layout 
and I got a lot of space here. So now I'm I'm thinking about it, and I don't see any reason not to bring this turnout up, um, you know, a, a good ways further. So I'm going to come up here and something like that, uh, and that gives me a couple of tracks to be able to uh, to serve into to Trinity Industries to be able to deliver parts uh, and other materials, and then to uh, to be able to um, ship uh, you know goods out as well. And of course, you know, <laughs> as is often the case. Uh, you know, we look at things and then we realize, oh, I made a mistake, I left something out. And I actually have left out a turnout here that I'm going to put in and then I'll describe to you what I've, what I've left out. Uh, uh, but what I need to move this uh, turnout here that goes from the helix into, um, into the, the grain elevator. I need to move it up. Now, what I need here is I need uh, uh, one of the longer right-hand uh, turnouts that I'm going to drop in here. The reason I need this turnout is because uh, another thing that I wanted to add uh, to this layout that would make it more prototypical is uh, in the prototype there are um, intermodal trains that run from the west coast uh, down to this area and they go to a large intermodal yard just north of the area that I model uh, called uh, Alliance Yard and so on my layout that would mean that those trains would come across the upper deck and down the helix but at this point they actually need to go off the layout into a staging area um, that would represent uh, Alliance. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm placing this turnout for those intermodal trains to run in and out through the helix down here into, uh, into Alliance. Change the fill color to match the rest of our bench work, and there we go. A couple more pieces of flex track to extend those up towards the wall. Finally, here you see I, I've, I've done a little bit of tweaking uh, off camera. Uh, but you see what I, what I think is pretty close to the final version of what I'm going to do here. I, I, it just kind of cleaned up uh, the industries here a little bit, added some, some tanks uh, that would go with uh, uh, Coke Industries, uh, added in the first turn of the helix, uh, also a turnout because I am going to do a double track helix here. Uh, so I've got the two, two tracks for the helix planned there. Uh, but I think I'm really happy with this track plan. It's going to give me a, a, a lot more space in the, the industries that I had uh, kind of jammed up in the end up here. I've uh, been able to, uh, to add a, a, an extra industry uh, here with Fort Worth Pipe as well as with uh, my, my grocery distributor up here in the corner. Um, th these lines here just represent where there will be a road kind of crossing uh, over in this part of the layout. Uh, so I hope that, you, that you've enjoyed this and I hope that you found something that was helpful to you as you think about uh, planning tracks and preparing for industries and operations on your layout. I can't say enough how excited I am to get started on this expansion to my layout and especially to get the extra operations that I'm going to get out of this lower level. I'll be showing you something of the design of the upper deck a little bit later, uh, but it's going to be pretty simple. One small town, Bowie, Texas, with a couple of industries and some open country scenery. Now, I'm just beginning to build this expansion to my layout, but if you'd like to see what my layout looked like before the expansion, you can check out the video layout tour that I did in the card in the corner of your screen right now. Also, take a moment to check out the description down below and find my Amazon pick of the week, as well as my Micromark promo code that can save you 10% on regularly priced items at micromark.com and tons of other great links that I know you will enjoy and benefit from. Well, if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, then check out the links on your screen. And be sure to join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?